Should you pay extra to get a lens with image stabilization built in? I'll talk you through it on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey everyone, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions on Adorama TV. If you've got a question, go to askdavidbergman.com and submit that form on the site. If it's one that I think is gonna help a lot of other photographers, I just might pick your question to answer here on a future show. This week, I've got a question sent in from Rax, and Rax wants to know, I just upgraded to the Canon R6 body, which has in-body image stabilization, or IBIS. What's the difference between that and the optical stabilization on a lens? Do I really need both, or can I buy the less expensive lens without IS? Great question, Rax. I've actually received a lot of questions about image stabilization just like that, and also when to use it and what the different modes do. So today, I'm gonna to talk about image stabilization. Now, for most types of photography, you don't want any motion blur in your images. A motion blur happens when you or your subject moves too much while the exposure is happening. The slower your shutter speed, the longer that sensor is exposed, the harder it is to hold your camera still the entire time. It also can depend on what lens you're using. The longer focal lengths, those big long lenses, the motion you see is really accentuated. The old rule of thumb in the film days was that you wanted the denominator of your shutter speed to be higher than your focal length. That sounds complicated, but it's really simple. All you have to remember is that if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, for example, you want to shoot faster than 1 50th of a second. If you're using a 400 millimeter lens, then ideally you'd be at a 400th of a second or faster. Now, in my experience, I'd argue that in today's world with very high resolution digital sensors, you can see more detail in your images than ever before. So I actually like to double that number. So if I'm using a 50 millimeter lens, I try to shoot at least a hundredth of a second. And if I want to be at uh, using that 400 millimeter lens, I want to be at 800 of a second or faster. Of course, you can go faster than that and you're going to be even safer, but there are times when you can't get your shutter speed any faster. Maybe you're in a dark environment and you've opened up your aperture all the way and you're pushing your ISO as high as you're comfortable and your image is still too dark. Well, then you have to slow down your shutter speed to get enough light onto your sensor. And if it's too slow, that's when you're going to get motion blur. So that's where image stabilization comes in. Many of today's lenses come with the option to have optical image stabilization built in. On the Canon lenses, it's called IS. For example, this lens is the Canon RF 100-500 millimeter 4.5 to 7.1 L IS USM, IS for image stabilization. Now I'm a Canon explorer of light and only shoot Canon, so I know much more about how that system works, but it can also be called vibration reduction or optical stabilization on other brands of cameras. Either way, it's pretty cool technology. The way it works is that there's a floating element actually inside the lens. It's kind of like a fancy shock absorber for your car. It moves around and tries to balance out the slight movements you make when you're hand holding your camera. Of course, IS has its limitations. We're talking about very subtle movements. Nothing is going to help you if you're violently shaking the lens around while you're shooting. Don't, don't do that. Don't do what I just did there. Um, quick little sidebar about different IS modes. On the newest Canon lenses, there are actually three modes that you can select from. Mode one is a good all around option. It tries to stabilize the lens in both directions, vertical and horizontal. If you're not sure what you're going to be shooting, just go ahead and start with mode one and you'll be pretty safe. However, if you're purposely using a slow shutter speed to try and make some panning shots, mode two is what you want to use. The processor actually can tell which direction you're panning. I think most of the time you're going to be panning horizontally, like if you're trying to make shots of race cars or runners or anything moving from side to side and want to go ahead and blur that background but this will work vertically too. Mode two stabilizes in only one direction so that it doesn't fight against you when you're trying to pan with your subject. And then mode three is really the same as mode one, except that it's only activated when you actually push down the shutter button to take the picture. Some people, myself included, find it a little bit distracting to have the IS working all the time when I'm just looking through the lens. You can actually see that little gimbal shake and it sometimes feels like there's a slight delay when you move because the IS is trying to keep everything still. It's what it's, it's, its job, right? But only uh, some lenses have this third mode, not all of them do, mostly the newer lenses, but you don't see any of that unusual movement through the lens and the IS only does its thing when you take the pictures. So I really like that mode three. Now, when the camera manufacturers talk about their, their image stabilization technology, they often say how many stops of shake correction you get. For example, this uh, 100 to 500 
gives up to five stops of shake correction. It obviously depends on a number of other factors, but the idea is that, let's say I was shooting this lens at 500 millimeters and had to lower my shutter speed to a 30th of a second to get the exposure I wanted. With no image stabilization, it's gonna be really difficult to keep completely still for a 30th of a second at 500 millimeters. But with image stabilization turned on, I'm gonna get the same stability that I'd get with five more stops of shutter speed. From a 30th of a second, that's 60th, 125th, 250th, 500th, thousandth of a second. I'm still shooting at 1 30th of a second, but it's the same or similar levels of camera shake as if I was shooting at 1 1,000th of a second. Pretty cool stuff. Now, keep in mind that this only works to counteract camera shake. It's not gonna help you at all if your subject is moving. You need to use actual fast shutter speeds to freeze moving action. So all this technology is built into the lens. It's called optical image stabilization because it uses the optics in the lens to work. But there is an even newer technology that Rax asked me about. In-body stabilization, or IBIS, as the name says, it's a different type of stabilization that works inside the camera body, not in the lens. Newer cameras like the Canon R3, R5, and R6 all have IBIS. Even the brand new, less expensive R7 has it. And what IBIS does is it moves the imaging sensor very slightly to compensate even more for camera shake. Now, I don't know about every camera system, but in Canon's case, IBIS works together and seamlessly with the optical image stabilization inside the lens. Certain camera and lens combinations can give you up to eight stops of shake correction. That's kind of insane. That means you can handhold your camera to make pictures that might not have been possible before. Now, I'll answer Rax's question about using IBIS with a non-IS lens in a minute, but first, are there times when you actually shouldn't use image stabilization at all? For the most part, I think you can leave it on all the time. Now be aware, I'm only talking about still photography, not video. There are different issues inherent in video shooting that might lead some videographers to prefer something like digital image stabilization over IBIS, but that's not really my area of expertise. I'd say if you're shooting still images using a tripod, then you should definitely turn stabilization off. The IS might work against you in that case and cause some movement that you wouldn't have otherwise. Some of the latest lenses will detect that you're on a tripod and actually fix that for you, but your camera is already stable, so I think it's just safer to turn it off. Besides that, unless you're specifically trying to get motion blur, I don't see any other reason to turn it off. I actually keep a piece of tape over my IS button uh, dial there, and I never take it off. Now, Rax asked about buying a non-IS lens to save some money and how that will work on a camera like the R6 that has in-body stabilization. So yeah, IBIS works just fine on its own, even if the lens doesn't have optical IS. Obviously though, you're just gonna get fewer stops of shake reduction if you're only using IBIS. For anyone who's trying to decide whether to pay extra for an IS lens, it really comes down to what you shoot. If you're a sports photographer who's always at fast shutter speeds, or let's say an astrophotographer who's doing long exposures on a tripod, image stabilization won't help you much in those situations. But even those photographers might be surprised how they'll benefit from IS. I shoot concerts at very fast shutter speeds, so the IS has little to no effect on that. But every show, I try to go up high and do a wide shot of the arena or the stadium. Because the crowd is much darker than the stage, I have to slow down my shutter speed to get a good exposure. Lens IS and IBIS together both help me to get sharp images every single night, even when I'm on very slow shutter speeds, like a 15th of a second. Now, something to be aware of is that the engineers actually say that longer focal lengths benefit more from lens-based optical image stabilization, while IBIS helps more with wider lenses. So IS is more useful on lenses like the 7200 or 100 -500. In wide shots like the ones they do at concerts, IBIS alone might be enough for that occasional shake reduction. Either way, I'd say if your budget allows, you can't go wrong with having IS on your lens for when you need it. So Rax, I hope that helps you make the decision on which lens to buy. Thanks everybody for watching. If you're not already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel, do me a favor and hit that button below. Use the little bell icon so you'll be the first to know as soon as new videos come out all week long from all the hosts here on Adorama TV. I've only got a handful of spots left for my live concert photography workshops this fall. Go to shootfromthepit.com for more info and sign up today because they're all just about sold out. In the meantime, I'm gonna be back here as always answering your photo questions right here on Ask David Burton.